If you are an iCloud Photos library user and you are using LumaFusion 1.0, then you may have experienced where the iCloud Photo library could decide that a video clip no longer needed to be kept locally and removed it from the local cache, but then that meant that inside of LumaFusion, if you had used that video, that it was suddenly missing media. See, unfortunately, the LumaFusion app has no way to tell Apple Photos library that a video clip is in use, and so Apple Photos didn't know it was in use and it would just remove it. The solution to that was pretty straightforward. All you had to do was when you launched the project, the media would be re-downloaded. But of course, if you were ever not online when that happened, then you kind of ended up in a pickle. And so the solution to this problem in LumaFusion 2.0 is anytime you add media to the LumaFusion timeline from photos or anywhere else, it is actually copied or cached locally inside of the LumaFusion database. So that means that that media will always be available even if it is removed elsewhere on your iPad. So that's great, but it also does mean that your iPad storage can fill up a little bit more quickly. So to minimize that, LumaFusion has built into it an auto cache cleanup where it will automatically remove files that are no longer needed. And you can disable or enable that, and you can even go in and manually clean up files. So I wanna show you about that whole process, how to delete files that you may not want anymore, and then even how to replace files that may have been inadvertently deleted. If you tap on the gear menu in the bottom right corner, That'll open up the help and settings, and then from there, tap on cleanup, and you'll have access to all of the cleanup tools. After a moment, you'll see that the sizes are calculated, and going from top to bottom, the first one is clean up temporary files. And at the moment, there aren't any temporary files that need cleaning up, so that's great. Next is clean up unused cache media, and you'll see right now it's at almost two and a half gigabytes. So let's see what's going on in here. Once the sizes recalculate again, we'll see exactly what's taking up space. And you'll see that Photos has 115 megs of unused cache media. So this means content from the Photos library that has been copied into the LumaFusion library that LumaFusion is no longer using. You'll see that Frame.io and Storyblocks are taking up little or nothing, but then there's Narbox taking up almost two and a half gigabytes. Well, why is it that that one is so big and yet Photos is so small? Well, let's back up in the settings and take a look at another option we have in here. The fourth option down is Automatic Cache Cleanup Settings. You'll see that Photos is enabled, but the other ones are not, and this is the default setting. And what this means is that if you add content to a LumaFusion project from the Photos library, it will of course be copied into the cache, but then if you delete that clip, it'll automatically be cleaned up, it'll automatically be deleted, but only from Photos. By default, anything brought over from Frame.io, Storyblocks, Narbox, or a connected WD drive will be left behind, will be left inside of the LumaFusion cache, even after you've deleted it from the timeline. The default thinking here is that these other devices are either internet connected devices or physical devices that may not always be available. And so odds are, if you've removed it from the timeline, you may wanna add it back at some point. However, the photos content you have access to because that lives on the iPad just outside of the normal cache. And so it, the logic here is that photos you can easily get back, the other things you may not be able to. And so this is the default setting. But of course you can change that. If you want to have it automatically clear cache on any one of these, you can do that as well. So now let's go back and go back into the cleanup used cache. And once again, we'll see that I have Narbox taking up about two and a third gig of content that I don't want anymore. So I can simply tap on enable, tap on clean up, and it double checks. Am I sure I wanna do this? I'll go ahead and hit yes. And now it has removed 2.37 gigabytes worth of files. Let's go back into the settings, back into cleanup, and take a look at one last option in here. If I look at clean up all cached media, I can actually go in here and clean up everything that is in use inside of LumaFusion. Now what this means is if I clear these out, even timelines that have media in place on them will have that local copy deleted, which means it will have to be reacquired from wherever it came from. So if you have old projects you just wanna clean up, you can certainly do this as long as you know that you have that media elsewhere. But do be careful of this because if that is your only copy that you have, well, that could be a problem. Now, I want to show you next what happens if media does go missing. This was actually a little bit difficult to set up. I had to add a clip to a timeline, go into the photos library and delete it from there. But first I backed it up to a other location so I could get it back later. And then I went into the actual library cache and deleted it from there as well. So I made sure that it was completely gone from the system. And in fact, I want to show you where things are stored inside of the file structure library. If we open up the files browser, You'll see if I tap on, on my iPad and go into LumaFusion and then into Library Media, this is all the content that is inside of LumaFusion, including everything that came from the Photos Library. So there's all the video clips that are being used in here. 
I can delete them from here. That's basically the same as going into the cache settings we were just looking at and wiping them out there. But of course you need to be careful of this because, well, you could end up deleting media that you may not have anywhere else. But let's just take a look at what happens if you do run into that situation. I'm gonna open up a project where I have deliberately deleted a clip. And when I first try to load it, it tells me that media is missing. This is going to offer to scan your iPad and look for the missing media. Now, if the missing media is in the photos library, then it should have no problem finding it. Every single clip that gets downloaded from the iCloud photo library gets a unique ID assigned to it that LumaFusion, of course, knows and it tracks the media that way. However, if you reset your iCloud photo library, meaning that you disable it on your system, let it completely erase your photo library, and then re-enable it so everything re-downloads, Unfortunately, at that point, Apple assigns a different ID to every file. So LumaFusion has no way to identify it. So then what it will do is go into a deeper scan and look for matching files based off of file name, file size, clip, aspect ratio, frame rate, and any other number of things that it can do to try and match the exact same clip. And for the most part, it's gonna find the right one, assuming, of course, that it's on the device. But there may be situations where it doesn't or it finds the wrong clip and mismatches it. So you do wanna be careful if you run into this. Now I'm actually gonna tap no on here because I wanna show you what happens if you don't have a matching clip. So here, first of all, is the first missing clip. And you'll see on here, it's got these blue lines through it. We see the yellow symbol up here and we can see that, well, the clip is missing. If I wanna know more about the clip that's missing, I can select it and tap on the I button under the viewer, and that'll give me the name and some information about it. And if I tap on the three dots, I'll get a little bit more info. I can see the exact size of the original clip, the duration, the aspect ratio, the codec, and so on. And so if I have media backed up elsewhere, just on another computer or somewhere else, this gives me an opportunity to manually go in and find those and then move them back into this system. So that's kind of what I've done here. Before I deleted this clip, I moved it into another location so that I could, at this point, restore that as if I had found it on another drive. So let's go through that process. I'll go ahead and import it, and I've got it stashed away in the files browser. I'll go to the iCloud drive, and then I put it into a folder called Oops. And here's the files that I need to recover. So at this point, I could go ahead and select both of these, tap on open, and that would download them and copy them into the library where I could then replace them on the timeline. Let's take a look at another file replacement instance that can happen. I'm gonna open up another old project where I have deleted the music from the library. So once again, it says there's missing media. And if I tap yes to scan it, it's actually not going to find anything. So let's go ahead in here and see what's missing. And it turns out in this case that the music track for this video clip is missing. Well, why is that? Well, just like with the photos library, I actually resynced my music library and the same thing happened. The music that I had stored in my cloud music library got a new ID and no longer matches. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'll go to my music library. And from here, I wanna search for the file by name. We see it's called rock this joint. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the search tool here and type in rock this, that should be enough. Search for it and there it is. Let's go ahead and preview that. Yep, that's the right clip. As you can see there, if you do end up with missing media, the software is giving you a couple different ways to replace it, either automatically or manually by simply locating that clip, copying it back into the library, and then dragging it back onto your timeline.